I was born in Banja Luka and I lived there until I was 14. And um, I consider it a pretty wonderful childhood. I think a lot of people that look back um, to Bosnia before the war will say the same thing. But mine really was. When I was 14, in 92, um, war broke out in Bosnia and my father pretty quickly got involved with an organization that was doing everything in their power to help people in a humanitarian efforts and um, helped bring Red Cross into that part of the country and um, um, went to the concentration camps around Priedor and negotiated a release a lot of the prisoners and um, because of his work he was pretty much targeted by the um, Serb government that was in the city at the time and they started getting a lot of threats um, towards his family and um, uh, I was 14 and so I was sort of the prime age of the girls that were taken to these rape camps and uh, my parents pretty much panicked and sent me out as quickly as they could. So I got out of Bosnia towards the end of May, right before my 15th birthday. The situation back home got worse and worse and worse and, um, um, and the moment that my mom got, came out she started plotting how we're going to go further because Croatia at the time was um, under uh, polit politically a right-wing party and they were very anti-immigrants and we were there was a huge influx of Bosnian refugees that they considered a nuisance in the nicest way saying that and um, my mom really didn't want me and my brother to grow up in an environment in which we would be other like the people would point figures at us or anything. We had many rigorous interviews, um, went through something like three or four of them and had to prove that we couldn't go back and my dad being very politically involved in the city that was, that was occupied by the Serb forces and his life being threatened on a daily basis was our ticket to America. We, based on that, we were one of the first families approved and um, part of the deal was we would, uh, after a year of living in, we would come here on a political asylum and after a year we would get a, a green card and after five years we could apply for citizenship if we're interested. We all did, so we're all American citizens now. My mom said, yeah, I came here for you to live your dream and you have to live your dream. You're not going to live mine. So if that's what you want to be, then that's what you're going to go to school for. And, and I did. And so about a year later, I went to a University of Central Florida in Orlando and studied theater. And, um, and after I graduated, I moved to New York. Dad's first time back was about six months after that. And um, so I went, I very quickly assembled a group of friends and we went uh, with my mom, my mom and dad, and then the four of us in a crew um, loaded up in a van and shot for about two weeks. Um, we shot this experience of going back, but also this, that was the first time they actually found out what my dad did during the three years that I didn't see him. And the stories were remarkable and um, we visited a lot of places that he had helped people there and um, and so what came out of it was a documentary called Back to Bosnia that um, I premiered in Los Angeles in 05 and after the premiere of that film people started pushing me in, into film it was this question of so you know are you gonna make another one are you gonna make another one but it was such an emotionally draining process for me um, that I, I didn't want to <laughs> do any more films, but um, after a while I started thinking, well, what if it's not documentaries, what if it's fiction? Can I um, still, can I tell stories that aren't true, but are somewhat true? I think it's remarkable, it's one of the things I love about this country is that here I am, 17 years later from that kid with nothing in her pocket and you know, living with roaches to a, a woman in New York City who's a successful filmmaker making her dream come true.
It's amazing.